Um, hello, everybody. Uh, for those who let's start off, I just want to know for those who might not have ever seen your show, can you tell us our viewers and listeners what uh, Solar Opposites is about and then about the, ha the Halloween episode? Yeah, Solar Opposites is about a, uh, a group of aliens that are on a team that are ejected from a planet that's hit by an asteroid who crash land on Earth and have to learn how to become a family on it. Half of the aliens love Earth, half of the aliens hate Earth, and across the seasons, they slowly become less of a team and more of a family. Um, we have an on-running story that's heavily serialized where the aliens shrink down bullies uh, and put them in a terrarium that are in their wall, and it's a heavily dramatic serialized story that sort of feels like uh, somewhere between War of the Roses, Escape from New York, and um, The Wire. And uh, we like to mix classic animated comedy with kind of modern TV serialized sensibilities. One of the things that we did at one point was with, we just asked Hulu if we could start making holiday specials, and they said, sure. So we made a Christmas special for uh, second season. This is our Halloween special um, that kind of feels like every Halloween special you've ever seen, but is also deranged and funny and twisted and gross and heightened and d adult. Um, and then, uh, we have another special coming, um, in season four as well that we're not allowed to talk about yet. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, so when I, when I was a kid, I grew up, uh, with like so many different Halloween episodes, like every single sitcom cartoon would do Halloween episodes. And I, I know that solar opposites is typically wild and free, but was there anything freeing about doing such a like contained Halloween episode? Yeah. I mean, we definitely, uh, liked playing against type of the rest of the series for this, that we just get to kind of be free about it. It's, it's the writer's favorite thing to do to do the, uh, the holiday episodes. And Mike came in with a pitch <laughs> and like, we knew we wanted it to be like scary and have like all of our favorite characters. <laughs> Mike just came in a pitch and was like, what if Corvo thinks it's too spooky? And like the fact that Corvo <laughs> wouldn't use spooky to be like really terrified, just like killed us. And that, that brought the silliness to the scariness. Yeah, to get even finer point on that, I wanted an alien that if he saw candy corn made him shriek and run out of the room. Like yeah. the, anything Halloween related. Cause you know, there's always one friend who's like, I don't like scary movies. If you guys are going to be doing a scary movie. And then you're yep. like, well, all right, we're going to watch the thing. Right. And they're like, well, is it sci-fi or is it scary? And you're like, uh, it's, it's kind of both. And they're like, I don't want to do it. Like if there's like a drop of scary in it, they're like, I don't want to do it. That's what we wanted to do with Corvo, but to an extreme degree, like regular size Snickers. Fine. Fun size Snickers, too scary, too spooky. I'm out of it. And that's where the kind of episode started. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay, so as a horror fan, I mean, John Kassir, like, I know. how fantastic. How, how did how did this all come to be? Was that, was did you start with, like, we want to get the Crypt Keeper, or did it, how did that all come to be? Because he's like a favorite of mine. He is truly amazing. You know, we started with, with you know, listen, as, the, as both Danielle and Mike have said, we love, part of the, the wonderful thing about Solar Opposites is that we love TV shows, we love movies, and we love honoring them and skewering them at the same time. And for us, all of us, the Crypt Keeper was like this amazing, hilarious character from our some of our childhood and some of our young adulthood as, a, as an old man myself. And I think once we sort of clued into like, this would be the thing that would terrify Corvo more than anything. Yeah. Plus we wanted to write all these fun sort of ditties that the Crypt Keeper said. And then we basically just said, we have to get John Kassir. We have to get the voice. He the voice is so him. much of it. Cause we can it's only, so our art style. Like I remember being like, when I was a kid being like, I love this show, but that puppet does scare me. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean it's a scary puppet. And he was amazing and brought so much to it and just owns that character in such an amazing way that it was it, it was perfect. It was beyond what we could have ever imagined. Yeah, I saw the trailer for it and I was like, oh, that's that's John. They got John. And I was just I was so excited. And I was like, that is either John or someone is incredibly, incredibly good at mimicking him, which <laughs> seems impossible. So when I got to the end of the episode, I was like, yes, OK, good. It's John. <laughs> He's so dedicated to that character, too. He was like. Yeah. He was like, Crypt Keeper would never speak this quickly. And we were like, I know, but it has to be stupider than the Crypt Keeper. It has to be like fast, funny, and scary, you know? And, and he was game. Like he was able to like adjust and do fast Crypt Keeper, you know? And that was really fun to get to see. Hell yeah. Uh, so you mentioned a little bit about like The Wire and all these, you know, television uh, connections that you have in, in the show. And it, the show obviously has a lot of reverence for film and television. And your Halloween episode has a lot of horror references. Are you all horror fans? Oh, yeah. I think to different degrees, right? Yeah. Like, I've, I have, I think we all have our horror limits. Like, there's some things that, like, hit all of us. Like, 
I have two friends that are just like, any horror movie is great. Any horror sequel is great. We'll watch all of it. Um, oh gosh, what was that amazing movie uh, from the guy who did Midsommar, the movie right before there? Oh, Hereditary? Not, Hereditary? Hereditary in the middle was too much for me. I was like, <laughs> nope, I don't think I like horror movies anymore. This is freaking me out too hard. Movie's um, intense. And I love- I like movie. dumb horror movies. I like movies okay. like Ghost Ship and Deep Rising that are yeah. like insane yeah. and stupid. But, you know, I mean, from my childhood, I, w- I was talking about this before, like Poltergeist is a movie that still scars me to this day. Yeah. So this- there are definitely movies that I saw way too young because I'm a product of the 80s when my parents, when HBO You was- never forget, like, like, I love thinking back on the first time I saw Phantasm. Like, I'm a huge Don Coscarelli fan. And like, that kind of like, classic low budget we're gonna just wield our filmmaking to like make a cool <laughs> idea i love that danielle i cut you off i'm sorry go ahead no that's great i was gonna say the the horror easter eggs in this episode expand even beyond like tv and film to books like mm-hmm. the aesthetic of hell that yummy Lack goes to is all based on scary stories to tell in the dark which i know were some of yes. my favorite so like the whole black and white with like that pop of red it's kind of an homage to uh, to those kind of scary books because we we did a lot of things too that scared us in our childhood. Like, I, although it's not a scary thing to adults, are uh, are you afraid of the dark? Was terrifying to me when I was a kid and those stories and like I loved it. It's so funny you just talk about that because I, I co-host a podcast called Scarred for Life where we talk to people in the film industry about the movie that scared him as a kid and all of these come up on a regular basis. Are you afraid of the dark? Was scary when I was. It a was. Kid. It was a little scary. I'm. I think I'm a little older than you. I wasn't as scared as you. A guys, movie that yeah. I saw too young, Poltergeist for sure. And then the other movie that I saw way too young was this Disney movie called Something Wicked This Way Comes. Oh yeah, that was supposed to be a Disney movie, and it's one of the scariest fucking movies you could ever see. As it was movie. Gremlins for me. I saw Gremlins too early, and I was like, didn't like. Oh, yeah. Now I love Gremlins, but I, that messed me up. That made me a comedy writer, probably. That's I think fantastic. I saw it a little too early. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you all so much for this. And um, congrats on this episode. And I can't wait to see what you guys are going to do next in season four. Thank Thank you, man. We're glad you like it.